Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to start digging into uh, the very early uh, parts of uh, the Python programming language. Uh, although we're using the Python programming language, these concepts uh, hold true regardless of the language. And in fact, many of these constructs that we'll be working with look just like they do in other languages. So I, I just want you to be aware that it's not entirely specific at this point in our in our studies. Uh, it's not uh, these concepts, these ideas are not entirely specific to only Python, but would hold true in, in many other languages, C, C++, Java, um, Scheme, <laughs> Lisp, lots of languages will use these same ideas and concepts. So therefore, general computer science, right? <laughs> so um, I like to just jump in and, and kind of go through the notes that I've put up on Canvas. Uh, and this way, I think it'll be a lot like uh, if we were just having a lecture in class. This is this kind of the same way that I would go about doing it. So um, without further ado, I will jump over to um, our lecture notes. And we'll go from there. So some of the most fundamental uh, concepts in computer science, or programming languages, I should say, uh, have, have to do with variables, expressions, and statements. Okay, so we, we have these things called variables, expressions, and statements. And maybe I'll try to relate this to English a little bit, uh, where statements are kind of like sentences, right? And sentences are made up of other things. So the statement is the, the most general form uh, or most general construct. Statements are made up of expressions and potentially variables, kind of in the same way that an English sentence would be made up of nouns, verbs, and, and, and other things. So uh, that's, that's kind of the way this is going to work. We want to kind of keep a, a, a focus on the what the names of these things are in a programming language, because it's universal. Uh, when we say a variable and we're talking about it, it doesn't matter what, what uh, computer language we're talking about, uh, most, if not all, have variables. So the concept is universal. Same with expressions and statements. So let's let's just jump right into uh, starting off with values and data types. Our first uh, uh, first section here, and so a value is extremely fundamental. So it could be like a two, or a number. It could be a number, or it could be a character. So two, two is a value, right? The whole thing here, two plus two, that I'm looking at. That is an expression, and it has an operator. The plus is an operator. Uh, this whole thing here is another kind of value. The contents, hello world, uh, and a comma there as well, are characters that are grouped together inside of quotes, right? And the, the, that grouping of characters creates something called a string. Right, so that's a particular kind of data type, a string. And, uh, I mean, if we want to really be fine-grained about this, the W here in world is a character data type. So a, a string is made up of a bunch of characters that are contained in double or quotes. It could be double or single quotes, doesn't matter. Uh, these are, this expression here, 2 plus 2, has an integer to and another integer two there, right? And an operator plus. So the twos are operands. The plus sign is an operator. So an operator, a mathematical operator, also or often wants, doesn't always, but often wants two operands, right? And so in this case, we have an expression. Okay, and so what we can do for these types we could find out, so we're, uh, you know, I, I noticed, we'll, we'll go back to hello world here again. I mentioned that that's a string, right? And so I'm, I'm, I'm actually, should be maybe, if I was going to be more correct about the way I'm relaying that to you, I would say it has the data type. The type of data that is, is a string. And the type of data that this is, is an int, an integer. Right? And the plus, the operator here is not a data type. Right? It's an operator, not a value. So these values are, are characters creating the string 
value, <laughs> well, it, that unit of characters is called a string. So that thing has the type string. So built into uh, Python, we have a way of asking Python, what type is this particular thing, entity, this object that I'm looking at? And so there, there is a function called type, type, which will return what type it is, right? So if we put something in there, we'd expect a word like it would, it would say, hey, this is a string or this is an integer or something like that. So to use any kind of variable, I'm sorry, function, we type the name of the function, in this case, type, followed by an open paren, and then there's a closed paren at the end. And then what's between those two parentheses is the object, I'm going to call it, the object that we want to know the type of. In this case, it, it, it includes the, uh, the quotes, right? And so the return from this, this was typed in the interpreter, the bottom, uh, the bottom pane in Thani. If you typed this in, then the return would be class str. So we're going to think of class right now, the word class as a type. We're going to just think of those as synonym, synonyms, class and type. So str is what the language calls a string. Right? They shortened it so there wouldn't be so much in the language. Now, if, I, if, we, if we put type 17, as I mentioned up here, I used two as the example up here, but here we just put another integer in, right? 17, it doesn't matter the integer that you put in, seven, five, whatever. We want to know the type of it. You'll notice there are no quotes around it, right? It's 17 all by itself. So it's the number or digit or integer 17. Um, and the return is class int. So we can find out what type, um, something, some type of value, some type of value, some value is, right? Whether it's a character or a string or there are many of them. There are many different data types. N not many, but me a number, a number of them. Let's say it that way. Um, so we could figure out if we didn't understand, we could figure out what type it is. And there are reasons why in a program we might want to do that. So there's a bunch of them, str, int. Uh, float just means it has a decimal point in it. They're called floating point numbers. So here, type, here they did one. Type 3.2, we did one. Um, and, and it returns class float, which means, oh, 3.2 is a, a, a value of type float, floating point. All right, so 17, 3.2, how do they look? Number, string, there's a string, and that's a string because it has quotes around it, right? So 17 with quotes around it is different than 17 without quotes around it. Without quotes around it, we saw that it was an int up here. But with quotes around it, we're saying don't treat the 17 as a number, but rather just a couple of characters that are bound together into a string. Right? And this is important. This is going to be an important concept. I'm not going to go too deep into it in this video. But we will, in a subsequent video, have uh, some more discussion about strings and how they work. I don't, I don't know that we're going to get all that deep into it right now. So anyway, we see that when we have the quotes around a 17, and we, we, ran, we ran it through the type function, um, the, re the reply is that this is a string. And same with the float. The float didn't matter either, right? It doesn't matter that it's a 3.2 because it's wrapped in quotes. So this now has changed from being a float, floating point number, to being a string. Now, I'll just kind of give you a heads up there that um, what, what makes this different is things that are strings, when we do arithmetic, let's see, where am I? Right here. When we do arithmetic operations on numbers, we expect the kind of um, results that we would get from a calculator, right? If we said two plus two in a calculator, we expect those numbers to be added together. So we would get a four out of that. Um, but what if we did A plus B on your keyboard? You just type in A plus B if, if you had letters on your calculator. Well, there is, it doesn't really make any mathematical sense to try and add 
the character A to the character B, right? So conceptually, they're very different. Something will happen with that, <laughs> and we'll get into it as we move forward, but it's important for us to recognize that 3.2 plus 5 is, a, is an arithmetic calculation. If I put 3.2 plus 5 in quotes, that's not an arithmetic operation anymore. That's just a string of characters. And so we're going to get a display of that string of characters. Right? So we want to just be careful that um, we kind of don't lose track of that. Right? So let's get back to jumping on here. There it is. Um, all right, so there's a little bit of stuff you can read about here, uh, how, how to use the quotes or single ticks in order to create a, a string. And so I don't want to spend too much time on that. That's something you can just look over. Hey, I would also encourage you to, you know, play around with this. You have Thani now in, installed on your, on your machine. And one of the things that will help you learn the most is to just tinker with it. And so there's, there are plenty of examples right here where you could just type some of this stuff in and see how it works and then modify it and, and just tinker with it. Kind of like if you were learning to use a new phone. You know, nothing's going to break. Either it's going to be right or it's going to be wrong. Whatever you type in, it won't work or it will. And it's really it's through the mistakes that you make that you actually learn how to do any of this stuff. So I would really encourage you to just tinker with it. You know, follow along in this document and... Um, and see what you can change, modify. And, and I would do that throughout the class, right? So uh, the tinkering is good. Let's see if we can get back there. All right. So you could play around with these strings a little bit and see how, when you type certain things in, what happens. Uh, large number, blah, 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 blah. I'll just move along here. You can, you can look at that. Now, variables. This is another big, good, uh, important concept here. What variables are. And we all have a bit of a, an idea of what variables are because, you know, they're very, we use them in math all the time. If you've been studying math for a long time. Um, I would encourage you, I guess, if you haven't thought of them this way, maybe you should think of them as just a box, a container. And so these variables, they hold something. All right, and we can we can make these variables up, these boxes up, and we name them. All right, so we make a named box, uh, and then we use this symbol, the equals what we typically call the equal sign. We are going to use it here in programming languages at large. It's called the assignment operator, and that's because it assigns. Well, let's let's just look at this example. Well, here's the statement is the whole thing. So the statement is the entire sentence, right? This is the assignment operator. So they're they're mentioning assignment statement there. So what they've written here, uh, they just they came up with a word message. So Python is not strongly typed, and you don't know what that means really right now, but just take my word for it. We don't have to say what when we create a variable. We don't have to say, "Oh, this is a, a box, a variable that that um, holds integers," or "This is a variable that holds characters." We don't have to say that. We can just create a box, and into that box we can put any kind of value. So we've created the box here called message. So that's the creation of a variable, right there, called message. And then into that variable, what we use this for, this equal sign, is assignment. So we're going to put the right hand operand, this thing, the right hand, this can be a, a statement or a, 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 any kind of anything, we can put anything over here we want that's going to evaluate in any sort of way. And whatever that evaluates to, it's going to be assigned to this variable, right? And anything can go in this variable. So while we're doing in this statement, the entire assignment statement. It's an assignment statement because that's what we're attempting to do here. Assign some value to some variable. So we've assigned the value. Remember, this is a unit now, right? Because it's a string. Because it's containing quotes. So we've taken this string and we've assigned it to, or in other words, put it in this box that we've called message. Here's another one. 
we've taken the value 17 and assigned it to the box called n. So we declared the variable n and assigned the value 17 to that variable all in one statement, one assignment statement. Both the variable declaration and the variable assignment happen in one statement. Same here. It's just that it was a, it turns out message can hold a, or is holding a string in this case, and n is holding a 17, and that's another variable called pi. Uh, and that was made up, right? That, that's not something that anything knows about. It's just a name like you wrote with a magic marker on the outside of a box. You wrote pi out there, and then you took this number. This is a, a, this is a float, right? And we stuck that float into that box. And now anytime I refer to that box, I'm going to be talking about this number, all right? So if, if ever I tried to do any kind of calculation with n, the name, the box's name, then I'm actually referring to the contents of the box. It'll always be the 17. So if I set n plus n, I'm, I'm actually saying 17 plus 17, all right? If I set n plus pi, n plus pi, I'd be saying 17 plus 3.14159. Yeah, these these are. Well, let's not worry about it. Uh, just take my. They're they're called tokens. Those symbols. So uh, this is very important to 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 keep in mind. Notice how in these assignment statements, we're always assigning a value on the right hand side to a variable on the left. We can't swap that around because we'd be trying to say assign to the symbol seventeen the value n and that that's not going to work 17 uh, as an integer here as it is um is a primitive kind of construct right it's something we can't change you can't say i don't want three to represent three anymore i want it to represent q so you have to have them in this order it's assignment always works right to left right so this is going to be an error you're not allowed to do that Syntax error can't assign to literal. So this is called a literal, right? So you assigning would be saying that I want to change the meaning of the thing on the left-hand side. So I don't want 17 to mean 17 anymore. I want it to mean N. You can't do that. All right, so we're going to keep moving on through this. You can kind of get through on it. Well, then here we go. Let's look at some of the output here. So we have this variable, we started with message, and in there is the, the string, what's up doc, is what got assigned to that variable. And then here, down in the interpreter, we just typed in message, and out popped the contents of that box, right? What's up doc? The same happened up there in, on uh, n, we assigned 17, so when we type in n, enter, the contents of that box pops up. So anytime we use the variable name, we're referring to the contents of that variable. All right, and same with pi. So day, we're assigning Thursday. Uh, when we just type day by itself, we're looking to retrieve what's in that variable. Only when we use the equal sign, the assignment operator, if, I'm, if I really want to be correct in what I'm saying, I need to say the equal, I mean, the assignment operator. It's kind of dangerous to call that an equal sign. I'm, I'm doing it only because we use math, and you guys have used math a lot. And so when you look at that, you probably think right off the bat, equals. But I look at that and I think assignment. <laughs> because uh, equals is a little bit of a funny word, right? When you say equals, are we, are we actually, are, are, what are we trying to, to say or discover here? Are we saying that I want to assign something, the right-hand side to the left, or am I trying to compare them? Am I trying to ask, are these two things equivalent? So I need a way in a programming language to be able to distinguish between those two language constructs. Um, Right? What do I mean by equals? I need to be a little more detailed. And so in a computer language, all of them, there's a way to distinguish between those two things. 
a single, typically, in many cases, in many languages, it works like this. A single equal sign is assignment. And a double equal sign, equals equals, uh, is comparison. We're looking to see if the two things, the thing on the right-hand side is equivalent to the thing on the left-hand side. So our result of that, or that would evaluate a question like that to either true or false, right? Is n equal to, is n equal equal pi? So we're asking a, a Boolean question here, right? So we're asking, are these two things equivalent? And so we would wind up with a false from that. And Boolean, by the way, since we talked about types, is another type. True false is 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 a possible outcome to a, a comparison. And so that's another type. So we have int, float, string, Boolean, and there are, there are more that we'll learn about as we go. Okay, so... Um, we definitely want to make sure that we're, we're, we're being very careful with the use of a single equal sign when we're talking about assignment and the fact that we are assigning from the right hand side to the left this is the kind of thing that many people make a lot of mistakes on because in in, in uh I, I see it often in algebra too that people will write things like three equals x right and you may you may think well that's i get it but that's because you're a human. That <laughs> you you've got to always keep in mind that this is not a human that you're working with here. This is a machine. It's just plastic and um, solder and electricity running through it. It's like expecting you. Know, you don't want to expect your car to know what to do. Well, I, I was going to make a right hand turn, and I expected my car to just know to to turn the right hand signal on. You you would never in a million years think that, right? But I know. Uh, the way computers are programmed and, and the way we interact with them, they, they leave us believing, many people believing, that there's some sort of intelligence behind them and there, there isn't. So a computer doesn't know that that's the same. 3 equals x, x equals 3 are two different things for a computer. All right, so we want to be very careful um, with that. And we want to be careful with the equals and equals equals. And that's that's one of the most egregious kind of uh, errors that you can make in a program. It's very hard to find that sometimes. You could drive yourself crazy trying to find that error when it happens. When you meant to say, when you, when you meant to use assignment and you use uh, equals equals instead of just equals. Or vice versa, the other way. Though those are because they won't cause an error message, right? Because they're both legal constructs, and so they're very difficult to find. We'll come across that, I'm sure, as we move forward. <laughs> okay, so notice here that we're just starting when we created these variables. I'm going back up. Message and pi. These these came out of the, the clear blue sky. Somebody just. I mean, these are they're, they're variables that just names. That just, I could have named them anything, Boyer, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. The only thing I'm restricted to in trying to name one of these variables is that the language does have a vocabulary. Uh, let's say it has a dictionary. And so you can't, just like you can't try to change the underlying meaning of the digit 17, the integer 17, you can't try to change the underlying meaning of one of the words that the language already knows about. So, in, in a, as an analogy, you already have in your language, in your, in your dictionary, in your head, the definition of what a cat means. And I can't all of a sudden try to change that into a giraffe or something else, right? It is what it is. It already exists. A cat is a cat. You can't change that at, at anymore. So, when we're creating variables... We have to be careful. It can happen as we're going through because, you know, it, it does. If Python had in its dictionary already knew, if it already knew about the word message, then this statement here, this assignment statement, would be illegal. Because message, in that case, this is not what's happened here. We see there is no message, no error message here, but I'm making up a story here to try and... <laughs> say what would happen if in fact python already knew the word message it was built into the language 
then we wouldn't be able to change. This part is where we're trying to change it, right? We're trying to change whatever message is into this. And we're gonna, it's going to complain. Python's going to say, you can't change my dictionary. Effectively. So we see, bop, 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 when we come back down here again. Uh, there's, there's a couple of things. So I mean, anyway, what we're talking about in this section here, 2.3, is is exactly what i was talking about there variable names and something called keywords so from my previous little bit of discussion there um if that word message had been built in already to the language so that it's you can't modify it then that word message would be called a keyword right so these are things that are built into the existing dictionary already they're called keywords so you'll learn about keywords as you move along because you'll on occasion, you'll attempt to create a variable <coughs> that has the same name as a keyword of the language already, and you'll get that complaint. But there are, there are in addition to that, there are other things you can't do uh, for a variable name, and one of them is start with a number. You can't start with numbers. You can't use this kind of symbol here, the, the dollar sign. Oh, yeah, class. Well, we saw already, I mean, this is exactly what I was talking about. We saw already when we use the word, the, the function type, it returns the word class along with what the type is, right? So the language already knows this word class, and we can't change that. <laughs> we, and that's what we're trying to do here, right? We're trying to say, change whatever's in class to computer science 101. And, and that's just not going to be possible we can't do that all right so uh, and there's a discussion about why that's happening and here's a table you don't need to memorize this but um, those are all the keywords so you wouldn't be able to create a variable called and and assign something to it you can't say and equals five assign a five to and to the word and the variable the newly created variable and um, you're going to get the, the, the error message. So are there any here that really, I mean, one could come up with that and try it, but it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to do it. But any of these, you, you could potentially accidentally choose one of them. Uh, here, it's, we're noting that you might want to keep that uh, handy, but I don't, I don't really think you need to keep that handy. You, you can just, if you try to create a variable and you see invalid syntax then you know what the problem is well that's a potential problem right then you got to look at that well that i screw up the variable name maybe but did i use a keyword I, I would wait to see that error and then look at the table right? i guess that's what i'm saying you know there's a lots of words you could come up with that aren't keywords and there's a limited number of keywords so you know Statements, evaluating expressions. All right. So, so then, as I was talking about earlier in this discussion, we had an operator with two operands, and this creates an expression. Right. So that expression then, once the magic happens behind the scenes, two pops out. Right. That magic is called an evaluation. <clears throat> one plus one is evaluated. And two is the, are the, are the results of the evaluation. And len is another uh, function that exists in the language. So it should be, well, it's a function name. It's not going to, but it's not going to be here. So yeah, there's other things you wouldn't be able to do. See, len is not in here. But if you try to use len, you're going to get a syntax area, uh, error because it's a function that's built into the language already. So we didn't have to write this function. It already exists. Len. And then len is a function that takes a string, in this case, hello, and it returns how long, how many, how many characters are in the string. So that operation there is called an evaluation. This operation here is called an evaluation as well. Right, there it is. It's a built-in Python function. All right, but we could do other kinds of things. There's the assignment right there. We assigned 3.4 to y. We assigned the results of len hello, which we already know from, from, from just a moment ago, 
that the, the evaluation of len equals hello, the string hello, is going to result, the evalu it's going to evaluate to a 5. And then the 5 is going to get assigned to x. Right, so when the evaluation the statement is being executed, because there's an assignment operator there, an assignment has to happen right to left, the Python interpreter will, have, will need to know what this is before it can assign. So it will evaluate <coughs> the right hand, excuse me, the right hand side first and then perform the assignment. And there's the five as expected. All right, and there's a plethora of, uh, of operands. A uh, number of them listed here. Many of them you're, you're already going to know. So, like the plus sign. We already know what it does, right? Plus, minus, multiplication, division. This is how you do an exponent in Python. So that's, and then uh, we'll have to talk about order of operations here shortly, right? So I think this is a pretty good. Uh, this is a good discussion for you to look through, and maybe we can talk about this if, if necessary um, afterwards. But, you know, we always see this as division. But just like with the equal sign, there is a divide-divide, right? Which, which uh, when, when we see this kind of a, an operator, uh, the language developers, the people who built this language, are trying to reduce ambiguity or are trying to eliminate. They can't not, there can never be any ambiguity in a programming language uh, in the way that they're, you know, we know that in English and all natural languages, there's a, an enormous amount of ambiguity. Uh, and people build their entire careers uh, based on that ambiguity. They're called lawyers, these people, right? <laughs> but we can't have that uh, in a computer language. There cannot be any ambiguity because the computer can't think. Um, here we have a section how we could change one type into another type. I don't want to go too deeply into it, but it might be, here's a good example of something, uh, that where we want to change this string into an int. So we would use the int, and it's a function, right, because it's the name int. Now you wouldn't know that off the top of your head, just out of nowhere, that there is a function called int. There is in Python, it so happens. And there's one called float. There it is. Um, so you don't know all the built-in functions. That's something you're gonna kind of get accustomed to as we go, but there is one and we know it's a function because it has a name followed by an open paren. And so that's the signature that tells me this is a function, not a variable, right? If there was something that had only int here, then I would be thinking of that as a variable. But the moment I see that open paren, that tells me this is a function. Okay, and then there's going to be a closed paren, as there always is, right? You always have to, when there's an open paren, just like in math, there's always a closed paren to close up the, the area. And then this is an argument parameter that's being sent to the int function. The int function will do something to whatever is being sent to it and then give you a return. It will evaluate, right? And so we see what it did was it, it turned the string 2345 into the an integer, an integer. Now we could have wrapped this all up and did type, right? So type takes an argument as well. We could have put all of this into the argument for type. I'm going to go all the way back up here. Well, it's up here somewhere. Kind of further than I thought. I thought it was just a couple little spins up there, but did I get a pass on it already? Well, it's it's there. You know what I'm talking about. I hate to be this, but I'm not. Oh, here it is. So that whole len open paren hello close paren would all go right here as the argument to the function type. So when we're evaluating, just like in math, we have to evaluate from the innermost parentheses out. And when there's assignment involved, we'll go right to left. Okay. In that case, there wasn't any assignment involved. 
the way down this page. So these type the uh, this is there, there are there's a set a whole set of functions so you can change these uh, these values into other types. So you can change numbers, floating point number into strings. You can change strings into floating point numbers, right? It's a, just possible to do all of that. Order of operations uh, is really the same. There's no change on the order of operations from what you've done already. So I don't think that I, I want to go too far into this. Uh, the interesting, the film thing, you know, that's that's where we might use a carrot, that little uh, hat uh, in algebra. Or, or if you're handwriting algebra, you would write it up higher, right? So there's got to be some way. We've got to find out some way to get um, an exponent represented here. So that this is two to the three, this particular one here. And so everything else works the same way. So you might play around with that a little bit just so you can get a feel of it um, to make sure that you know what what's happening there. Well, we are going to get into this right here. I bet this is the end, though. It's basically, it's close to the end. Operations on strings. So there's things that we can do with these strings that we have. Remember, that's the example of a string. A string has quotes around it. It's a collection of characters. <coughs> so we, we do some. there are some operations. When I say operation, it brings to mind arithmetic operations, I imagine, like plus, minus, things like that. Minus, one. Makes no sense, right? Message minus one. If message, we know from up above, we created message as a variable that's holding some uh, string. So we're trying to subtract one from some string. <laughs> if it were like, for instance, giraffe, what does that mean? Giraffe minus one. Like if giraffe is not a variable, it's not holding any value. I'm just trying to say, like in a, in a human language, oh, you have to subtract one from giraffe. Well, well that doesn't make any sense, right? So it, it's not going to make any sense to the computer either. The, this, is, this isn't uh, any, any craziness here. It's just that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to divide a word from the dictionary by uh, some number, some, some integer or some floating point number. Or by some other by some other uh, string doesn't make any sense, right? Hello divided by goodbye. What does that mean? What's the result? What's the evaluation? I don't know. Doesn't make any sense. All right, so it's very logical. All of it is. But here's where things get a little bit interesting. We have a variable here. We out of the clear blue sky, we created this variable fruit, and us to it we assigned the string banana we created another variable baked underscore good it's okay to use the underscore if you want to it we assigned the string nut bread and notice that starts with a it's quote space nut space bread okay then we're going to print we're going back to that print function i know it's the print function because there's the name of something followed by an open paren and then there's an argument here of some sort and then a close parent so it's the print function right and this is its argument well the print functions argument in this case is fruit and this is a this is a, an addition right it's an arithmetic ad addition operator it has two operands a left hand side and a right hand side those two operands fruit and baked goods fruit and baked goods, we know are strings because we can see they're in quotes, right? And we're trying, so we're trying to add together two strings. So that's also would not make any sense uh, under, under my discussion here. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. You can't really add them together. They're not numbers. But what is useful with strings is to be able to concatenate them. We want to merge the strings together into one string. And that's what the plus operator does with strings, with two strings. So um, the output will be banana nut bread. No period there though, right? See that period there? That's for the sentence of the text here. Your output should not have a period on it because there is not a period here. Notice why the, the space is in front of nut. 
so that that space will exist. Okay, so again, you can play around with that in your Thani. There is a, another function here, input, that we use kind of rather often. So what does that function do? I know it's a function because there's a word there. I'm familiar with the word input, uh, so I know it's a word. And um, there's directly following that word is an open paren. Therefore, this is a function. It's telling me right off the bat, here's a function. And quickly here, without even um, doing too much, I can say, oh, and there's an assignment statement there, an assignment operator. So we're trying to assign to this variable n got created, and to it we want to assign whatever this evaluates to, right? And so what is this, and how is it going to evaluate? Well, it's a function input. What's input going to do? It's going to cause a box to open up here. You could type a number into this box. This is a built-in function. You could type a number into this box. When you click OK, then this evaluates. This whole thing evaluates to whatever number you put in there. So if you had entered a 5 into this box, then you can think of this as replacing all of this text here with a 5. So you're assigning a 5 to n. Right? Then we could print n. Composition. So here's us uh, putting some things together. Uh, yeah, this will be interesting for you to play around with this. So we've got a response. Yeah, what is it, right? We're, we're using the input box in order to grab from a user, user input, and assign it to response. And we're going to, whatever got signed in, we're going to change it to a float, make sure it stays as a float, and put that floating point number, the decimal point number, into a variable that we just created called R. We created another variable area, and into that area, we want to assign the results of this evaluation. All right, and then we try to print, and here's an interesting addition to the use of the word print, the print function. The print function can take more than one argument, and we just comma separate them. So we 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 textually in a, in a in quotes we created our own string. That's what we ever only ever sent to print. I think now we did a in an evaluation before. <coughs> I think if we said print two plus two, the output's going to be four, right? The evaluation happens. So here we have a string and then a comma. So we have a multi, uh, a multi, a multiple parameters that were a list, a parameter list that we're going to send in. So we want to send in whatever this string is here, which is the area is, and we want to send in whatever the contents of area are or is. So area is. An area is a is in line three, which is before line four. So line three will have calculated first, right? Before we even get to line four. So it's always top down, kind of left to right, although we do see that that changes. Generally speaking, it's top down, right to left. Uh, left to right. Only in the case of assignment are we going to go right to left. In any case, let's just make sure we know top down, even though there are exceptions to the rules going right and left. So this is going to happen first, right? Area is going to, this is going to get calculated and it's going to be assigned to the variable area. So now what we're talking about here is the contents of that variable. So that variable needs to have contents before we try to use the contents. Okay. So it won't work well if we swap these two lines. If we move the print up to line three, the print statement, uh, if we move the area, the assignment statement here for area, if we move that to line four, so I'm swapping those two, it won't work right because remember, we're running top down. So we would hit four first and we would be printing and we're trying to be using the contents of area before we calculated what area was. And that won't work because we didn't calculate it yet. It doesn't do all four lines simultaneously. Okay, the interpreter interprets one after the other. One, two, three, four. There are ways to change that too. But for the, generally speaking, 
for default uh, evaluation is top down, left to right. That's default. There are ways to modify that, but by, by default, unless we modify it, it's going to do that. It's going to go top down. The interpreter will interpret top down. Okay, so they're just going to give you more examples, or so we're having more examples here of what is being called. See, this is these are the individual four things that we instructions that we need to have happen, and and this is each one separated as much as possible. But it would be possible for me to say whatever response is here. That's what I'm going to change to a float and then assign it to R. Well, what if I just took this whole line right here, I cut it from there, and I paste it right here? Wouldn't that be the same thing? Because imp what is your address uh, radius is, is going to have still the number 5 in it. And so 5 is going to go into float. And will be changed and then put into R. So they're calling this, or this is being called, or this is called, I should really say, because it is called com composition. Okay. So all we're really, I mean, this, we can get really complicated with this composite composition, and it, it's it's okay and it's clever to close things in like that to have functions inside of functions and useful. It's more than just clever; it's oftentimes useful. But if you go too far with it, we start to get into situations where the code really, this, so this is the same code, all in one line. That's the same code as this. It's all four lines. It, took, it, it really is four lines, all compacted into one. Right? So this becomes more and more difficult as you're doing this for, for a, a, to read. Right? There's a little more complication to it. And the further you go, the more complicated it gets. And it may not be a big deal while you're first writing it. And you may be putting comments in to help you remember. But imagine six months later you come back and you've done this long composition here. And um, because it was clever, right? That, that's what starts happening, believe it or not, when you're programming. Starts, things start to, you know, you're getting good at it and things start to look clever. And you want to say, wow, I have a cool idea. Let's do this. Let's put this inside of that. Right? And then six months later you come back and you think, what the heck was I doing? I, I have no idea what this even is anymore. So you want to put some comments in there if you're doing this at least, much less if somebody else came along, right? They would, they would have to figure out what it is that you were doing. Um, so we want to be careful with that. That's all I want to say with that. Uh, it's possible, yes, and, and desirable in many cases. But when you're starting to do it just to be clever, you should think twice, probably. Cause yourself trouble down the road. Something called the modulus operator. We're almost at the end, guys. Don't worry. We're almost there. The modulus operator, you can play around with a little bit. I didn't know that we were going to actually talk about Oh, here it is. This is the modulus operator. This is the division. This is integer division slash slash, which you probably looked at up above a little bit. So we got the, the left-hand non-decimal portion of it. So it got truncated at the decimal point, right? This division, 7 divided by 3, is not evenly 2. Right? But we want the integer. So we're taking only the left-hand portion of it with no decimal. Well, the modulus operator, that's for the slash slash. The modulus operator does the other half of that. It, it gets the, the decimal portion, not the integer portion. Right? It gets the right-hand side of the decimal point. The right hand side of the decimal point is 1. So this is actually 2.1. That's very useful sometimes. You'll, you'll come across times when that's useful. So we, we, we definitely want to know what the left hand side is of the decimal and what the right hand side of the decimal is for particular calculations that we may be making. It's the remainder. Modulus is the remainder. I just happened to notice that word sitting there. I thought, okay, we'll go ahead and um, use it. Um, and then down here we have just a glossary. So this is just uh, kind of all the words that we've been saying throughout all of this whole uh, thing here, this whole discussion. So I'll leave that glossary right here, 
and so you have something that you can kind of go through to make sure you remember <coughs> all these words that were this new vocabulary you're learning a new vocabulary and well kind of need that new vocabulary because it gets tough when we're when we're talking about things and we don't want to make we don't we don't want to be amb ambiguous or right when, 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 we're, when we're speaking we don't want to say equals for instance right when we didn't mean it i meant something else you know there's Humans have problems with this all the time, with ambiguities in the language, and so we, we don't want to be like that with this, <coughs> with programming, excuse me. We want to try to keep things, so we're saying the same things to each, to one another. So I'll leave that vocabulary in there, you can kind of look through that, and, um, and we'll, we'll, um, we'll keep moving forward like this. And um, so let me know if you like this kind of a format of going through that document with you. I think it's kind of as if we were in class together. Uh, hopefully it wouldn't, didn't take as long. I'll, you know, I'm always trying to do them as fast as I can, but I, and I get going, I find it hard oftentimes to stop um, <laughs> talking about this stuff. So, all right, I think that's it for this one. Let me just stop it now so I can get a little bit of uh, ending on this. All right, I'll see you on the next one.